Hi, and welcome to the Unit Conversion Tutor. Uh, this is a class that's a collection of, of things that really aren't necessarily taught in any particular class, but are very, very useful and very important for you to understand in order to tackle a broad variety of classes that you're going to have to take, whether it's algebra or calculus or physics or chemistry or high school science or any of that stuff, this material in this class is going to help you in those classes because uh, unit conversions and scientific notation and all of these things are used in all of them. Okay? Now let me give you a, a, little, a little background on my thoughts on this. Okay? There are three things that I learned early on when I was in high school that have served me very well over the years. Okay? And those th three things are really learning the scientific notation and not having your eyes glaze over it, okay? Because when you look in the books after a certain point, it's going to be on every page, okay? Learning the uh, SI system of units, a metric system, basically, um, because that is something that uh, when you're in grade school here in the U.S., you don't really learn too much, but you'll learn through this class that it is hands down so much easier to deal with than the inches and the feet and the pounds and things that we're saddled with here um, you know, growing up, okay? And in reality, if we could switch a gear and have the, have the U.S. switch over to the metric system, we would do it in a heartbeat, but it's a little bit more challenging than that to actually pull off overnight. But having said that, the SI system of units is so easy to understand. It makes your life so much easier. We'll get to that in a little bit. The third thing is unit conversions, okay? How to convert units from one set of units to another. Maybe you're going from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. Maybe you're going for con converting square inches to square feet or square kilometers to square inches, okay? There are lots of these little conversion factors that you'll normally open up your textbook and you'll see all these conversion factors on the page, but you won't know how to apply them. Do you multiply by the conversion factor? Do you divide by the conversion factor? And as, if it's a much more complicated problem, maybe you don't have a conversion factor that suits your particular problem, then what do you do? Are you just gonna, just gonna be stuck? Well, no, I'm gonna show you the tools to handle that. It's, it's really and truly, once you learn what I need to teach you in this class on unit conversions, I guarantee you to this day in advanced physics, in, in, in advanced graduate school physics, many times you'll look in, at an equation and you won't quite understand how they got to the, to the equation that you're, you're actually trying to solve, but by looking at the units in the actual equation, you can figure out a lot about what it means, okay? So that stuff, sometimes you'll hear it called dimensional analysis in your, in your class. Sometimes you'll hear it called unit conversions. Maybe they don't even teach it to you at all. Just assume that you know it. Well, I'm not going to assume that you know it. I'm going to break it down for you and make it simple, okay? Before we get to that, we need to cover some stuff in the beginning. So we're going to take one topic at a time. This particular section is on the scientific notation. Now it sounds like a very complicated thing. Scientific notation, it must be very complicated because it's a special notation for science, okay? It's not hard, guys, okay? I'm gonna show you right now, it, it, it's, it's really not hard at all. We just need to go and walk through it step by step. The big picture is, okay, for scientific notation, the big picture is when you're talking about very large numbers or very, very small numbers, it gets very inconvenient to write the number down just as you would think. Like let's say you're talking about taking a trip to the grocery store. That's pretty simple. If the grocery store is you know, two miles away or three kilometers away or whatever, you tell somebody it's three kilometers, no problem, uh, to the grocery store. Okay? Now let's say we're going to go to the planet uh, Neptune. Okay? That's very far away. I haven't looked it up, but I know that in miles it's, it's millions of miles away. Okay? And if I'm going to write that number down every time, I'm just picking this out of my out of thin air. I'm I'm sure this is completely wrong, but let's just say it's two million three hundred and seventy four thousand nine hundred point five you know, miles or something like that. Who wants to write that down every time? Okay, nobody does. Okay, so when you're dealing with big numbers, it's very cumbersome to write all those decimals out. And also, when you're talking about very small things, like you're talking about the width of a human hair, or let's say you're an atomic scientist and you're looking at the the diameter of an atom or the shape of a molecule. Well, those things are incredibly tiny, okay? Very, very tiny. You know, millions of times smaller than, than, than anything that we're dealing with on a daily um, basis. So you don't want to write 0 0.0000000005 meters. You don't want to write that down because you're going to be writing these, you know, your homework down in your, in your papers or whatever. It's going to get maddening trying to do that. So, there's an accepted standard for writing very big numbers and very, very small numbers. It's very simple to understand and it's just called scientific notation. That's all it means, okay? It's something you'll see in every science class you take, okay? So, before we actually get to the scientific notation, let me give you one little primer I think is going to make it easy for you, okay? So, let's do that now.
Okay, now let's take a trip down memory lane here. Here's the number 10. Okay, you'll see where I'm going with this in just a second. Here's the number 10. Because again, I'm not going to assume you know anything at all about this stuff. So we're going to start from the very beginning. If I'm going to tell you, okay, um, 2 times the number 10 times the number 10. This is not a variable x. This is just multiplication. 2 times 10. Well, we all know that's equal to 20, right? Okay. Now, just, just hang on to that in the back of your head. It's not something that we're really going to need at the moment, but I'm just going to write it down just to show you that. Now, let's say you have 10 squared. Do you know what 10 squared is equal to? Well, from your algebra, you know that a square is when you multiply something by itself. So 10 squared is 10 times 10, which you should know is 100. So 10 squared is equal to 100. Okay, so what I'm going to do under here is I'm just going to say this is equal to 100. You all know this, okay? Now let's go up and say 10 cubed. Okay, what is 10 cubed? This would be 10 times 10 times 10, because that's what 10 cubed is. So 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So 10 cubed is 1,000, okay? Let's keep going. 10 to the fourth power, okay? Well, that would be 10 times 10 times 10 times another 10. This is going to be 10,000. Okay, let's do one more. 10 to the fifth power. What is that? Well, that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. If you put that in the calculator, you'll keep going. So you've got 100, 1,000, 10,000. You multiply by 10 one more time, and you're going to get 100,000. You see the pattern here? Every time I add some, another increment, the exponent here, I'm multiplying what I had before times 10. So everything here is getting 10 times bigger than before. Okay, you'll, this will all make sense with scientific notation here in, in just a little bit. So going this direction, we get bigger and bigger, right? That's what this is saying. 10 squared, 10 cubed, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth. This is all going bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, okay? Now let's go the other direction, uh, going, going like this. What is 10 to the minus 1? Because here's, you know, 10, uh, 10 squared. Actually, this is 10 to, effectively, this is 10 to the first power right here, okay? 10 to the first power, I could write like that, is equal to 10, okay? So what would be 10 to the minus 1? Well, you should remember back from your algebra that anytime you have a negative exponent, that's just 1 over, you take what you had and make it a positive exponent. So it's 1 over 10 to the first power, okay? So it's 1 over 10, which is another way of saying 1 over 10 is 0 0.1, okay? So let's keep going, and I'm going to recap all this in a second. Let's say you have 10 to the minus 2. Well, just like before, you have a negative exponent, so it's 1 over 10 squared. That's how you take negative exponents and change them into positive exponents. You'd say 1 over whatever your exponent was and make it positive. So 1 over 10 squared, we already found out from before that 10 squared was 100. So 1 over 10 squared is 1 over 100, okay? And we know from doing this in our calculator that 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. 1 one hundredth, okay, is another way to say that. Okay, do one more, because you'll see the pattern here. 10 to the minus 3, we're going to get 10 times smaller again. So it's going to be 1 over 10 cubed, which is going to be 1 over 1,000, which is going to be 0 0.001. Okay, so I want to circle a couple of things, because I want to talk about them. And I really didn't have to do this, I guess, but I really want you to understand what's going on, because I really hate teaching things and just telling people just to, um, just to do it that way, just to understand, you know, just to, just to follow some silly little set of rules. I really want you to understand what you're doing. Because trust me, with understanding comes confidence, and with confidence you can do anything you want, okay? So what do we have here, Jason? What are we trying to say here? Okay, you start at the number 10. If you square it, you get 100. You increment the exponent, you get 1,000. And then it goes to 10,000, then it goes to 100,000. If you go the other direction from 10, 10 times smaller, you get 0.1. 10 times smaller than that is 0.01 and 10 times smaller than that is 0 0.001. So basically, what you're doing here is you can, what we're going to do with scientific notation, you'll see in a second, you see how I'm writing all these decimals as powers of 10, okay? All of these zeros that are coming after the, um, the, the one there, they're, it's allowing me to write them all as little exponents of 10, okay, is what I'm trying to say here, okay? And that's the point, guys, okay? Because what I told you before, it's, it's really inconvenient to, when you're trying to write how many miles or kilometers it is to Pluto as, you know, 10,375,975,342.5, okay? That's very difficult and very, you know, labor-intensive to write, all those decimals and all those zeros, okay? Here, when I'm trying to sell you, tell you, and we'll get to it in a little bit after I erase the board, you can write big, big numbers just as powers of 10, 
Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. You can also write very, very small numbers with lots of decimal, uh, you know, zero point with a bunch of zeros here as um, negative exponents, 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 1. And you can go on down as far as you want to go. If you're talking about the diameter of an atom, you might have 10 to the minus 9. Okay, that's 9 billionths, or and that's, that's a billion times less than than everyday, you know, distance scales that we're dealing with. So if you're talking about planets, you might have powers of 10 way up here at 10 to the, you know, you know, 8 or 9. And if you're talking about something inside the, 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 the atomic nucleus or something, it might be 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 12 or even smaller than that, okay? All I'm trying to do here is show you that you can write very small numbers as powers of, negative powers of 10, and you can write very big numbers as positive powers of 10 because that is going to be the focus and the crux of scientific notation. So let me go ahead and erase the board here. We're going to dive straight into some examples and I'm going to show you by example how you actually use this scientific notation stuff. Okay, so now we have the basic idea, just some sort of basic idea that powers of 10 can somewhat represent big numbers or very small numbers depending on if it's a positive exponent, 10 to the 5. 10 to the 4, or if it's a negative exponent, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 3. You can write big, very big numbers and very big small numbers as powers of 10. That's exactly what scientific notation is. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and work some problems. I haven't even told you what the scientific notation stuff is yet, but you'll get it very quickly after the first problem, okay? So all we want to do is we want to express the number 2065000 uh, we're going to express this number in scientific notation. And what is this number? We haven't even talked about the units yet, but let's just say that's kilograms. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next section when we talk about the SI units, but this is a unit of mass. It tells you how many atoms you have, basically, or how, how much of a substance there is, okay? It's a very big number. If you're writing a scientific paper, it would be, you know, problematic to keep writing all these zeros all the time, okay? So how would you do it? Let me just give you the answer and we're going to talk about it. You would write that in scientific notation as 2.065 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 kilograms. This, my friends, is the answer. Notice I didn't do any calculations. I didn't add anything together. I didn't subtract. I didn't have any steps here. This is really it. You don't actually have to work anything out. You actually just have to count. That's what's going on here. Now, before we go and show you how we arrived at the answer, let's work backwards, okay? Let's start with this and figure out how this is actually equal to this. Now, remember back from the previous board, 10 to the 6. What does 10 to the 6 mean? Okay? 10 to the 6 as a quantity, okay? 10 to the 6 is by definition equal to 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 10 multiplied by itself six times. If you put this in the calculator, what you're going to find out is this is one million. Okay, that's what 10 to the 6 is equal to. It's equal to one million, okay? So, if you multiply a number by a million, okay, all you're going to end up doing is moving that decimal point to the right six times, okay? Let me explain that to you a little bit more because this is kind of a big number. Let's say I have the number 2.5 times 10, you know, to the... Uh, squared, okay, like that. Well, this 10 squared from the previous board, you, you might remember, 10 times 10 is 100. So 2.5 times 100. What do you do when you multiply by powers of 10 like this? Well, when you actually do this multiplication, what you're going to find out is you're going to get 2, 5, 0, 1, 2. Basically, when you multiply by 100, all you do is move the decimal point two points to the right. So if the decimal was originally right here between the 2 and the 5, you just move, because of this multiplication, you move it two spaces to the right. One, two. Okay? So when you multiply by 10 squared, you move the decimal point from this spot over to the right two times. And when you get over here, when you move it again, you have to add a zero because you're moving it another time. Okay? So when you multiply by 10 cubed, you're moving the decimal point three points to the right. When you multiply by 10 uh, to the fourth power, you move that decimal four times to the right. When you multiply by 10 to the fifth power, you move the decimal five times to the right, and so on. If you, if you multiply by 10 to the 10, you move that decimal 10 times to the right, okay? So look at what we've done up here. We had this answer. I haven't really shown you much other than write it down. 2.065 times 10 to the 6. This 10 to the 6 just means that you move this decimal point six times to the right. One, two, three, 
and you have to go three more times, four, five, six, and you're going to have to create three zeros to do that. So if you, if you started here, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Basically, you start at the big number, you put the first digit down, you put a decimal point, and then you write all the digits after it that have meaning, okay? This, these zeros over here, you don't really have to write them because the trailing zeros don't really, don't really mean anything here because it's after a decimal point, okay? But we're writing down all of the numbers that actually give value to the number after the decimal point. The decimal point always comes after the first digit, okay? So we write that down and then we multiply times 10 and then we have to pick our exponent. And all we're doing here is we're starting here and we count 1, 2, 3, 4, five and six and that's what you do you just count six and you move it over and believe me you do use your fingers okay don't just guess here put it on your paper write the number down put your finger after the first number and then say well how many do I have to go move it over to the right one two three four five six and then write that down that's all you do okay let's continue working some problems because this is the kind of thing that you can talk about it uh, a lot but you know it's very simple once you get once you see a lot of problems okay let's say I want to convert or I want to represent 137000 meters per second. Again, we haven't talked much about units yet at all. A meter is, is you know, about that big. It's about the size of a yard. Meters per second. And we want to put it in scientific notation. All you do is you put the first digit down. You put a decimal point. You put any other digits behind it that give meaning to the number. These trailing zeros really don't, don't have a a weight. They're just placeholders telling you how big the number is. But the three and the seven, the three and the seven do actually give you some some meaning. And then you write times ten and you have to pick an exponent here. What number do you put here? You just put your finger right here and you say, okay, I'm gonna move this decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, because there's an implied decimal point here. So it's to the five. And of course you can check your work. You can say, well I'm gonna move this five places. One, two, three, four, five, I have to create three more zeros, three more zeros, this is the right answer. 1.37 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. And that's exactly how you would say it, 1.37 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Okay? Scientific notation is just taking the first digits of a number that mean something, put the decimal point after the first one, times 10, and then using this exponent to move your decimal, back or forth. Okay, that's all you're doing. Let's say you want to do the number 927300, zero, zero. and let's say this is pounds in the, um, in the um, American system, pounds. And we want to, of course, put it in scientific notation, okay? Well, again, the first thing, you want to write down your first digit, put a decimal point, write down any digits that actually give meaning to the number, 273. These trailing digits really aren't going to give you any meaning as far as um, uh, to the number. They're just placeholders giving you the, the, the size of the scale of the number. They're basically telling you how large the number is, but they're not, they're not giving you any more info beyond that. And then you go times 10, and you have to pick a power of 10. You start with your finger here after the 9, and you say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 9.273 times 10 to the 5, okay? Pounds, if you're talking about pounds, okay? So again, you just put your finger after the first thing and count. Now let's do something a little bit different. Let's say I have the number 0. Point. Zero 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 one three five, and I want to convert this to scientific notation, of course. <clears throat> now I haven't really given you a, an example like this, but you should sort of realize that just like we were multiplying by positive powers of ten before, and that was making the number bigger, moving the decimal point. Let me see if I can get this right on your screen to the right. Okay, if we multiply by negative powers of ten, just like I showed you on the big board in the beginning. Negative powers of 10 are nothing more than putting decimal points in front, making the number smaller. Okay, just like we talked about at the very beginning of the lesson. So if I want to move the decimal point to the left, I'm not going to multiply by positive powers of 10. I'm going to multiply by negative powers of 10. Okay? So, again, these are the digits that give meaning to your number. These zeros are just placeholders telling you how small the number is. These are the ones that actually give meaning. So you put one point. 3, 5. Again, you always put the first digit with a decimal and then any trailing digits after. They give meaning. Times 10, and now you have to pick an exponent. Now you're trying to make this number very small, so you put your finger here and you count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's not positive 6, it's negative 6. Okay? Again, starting here, you want to move the decimal left, it has to be a negative exponent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
1.35 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay? Quickly, you're going to start to realize that when you see scientific notation with positive powers of 10, 2.5 times 10 to the 5, that's a big number. 2.6 times 10 to the 9, that's a very big number. 2.7 times 10 to the 15, that's a huge number. Okay? You start seeing negative powers of 10, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3, 1.10 times 10 to the minus 7, anything like that. Negative powers of 10, those are very small numbers. So negative powers of 10, very, very little numbers. Talking about the width of a hair or the distance between an atom and, 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 a, and a, some kind of a structure or something like this. Okay? Very, very big numbers have the positive uh, value of 10. So basically, if you want to move that decimal off to the right to make a big number, use a positive power of 10. You want to move it to the left, use a negative power of 10. Either way, you're just counting decimal spaces. That's all you're doing. That's why scientific notation isn't very hard once you understand it. So if we want to do 0 0.12501 and we want to convert this to scientific notation, it's the same thing. We want to start with the first digit that gives meaning, 1. 0.2501. Now, in this particular problem, everything over here, all of these digits give the, the number meaning, okay? So we have to carry them all. We put the first digit that has meaning with a decimal point followed by the other digits behind it, times 10. Now, how do we change this number into this one? We want to move the decimal to the left one space, so it's negative 1. 1.2501 times 10 to the negative 1, okay? What if we wanted to do... 0 0.00025. Wanted to convert that to scientific notation. Again, these are the digits that give meaning to the number. These zeros are just placeholders telling you how small it is. So you write 2.5. You always put your first digit with a decimal, then whatever digits come after it times 10 to the minus because you're going to be going left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Times 10 to the negative 4. So it's 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay? Let's just get some more practice. 7.74 times 10 to the 6. Let's say I was giving you that number in scientific notation, and you want to write down the full-blown glory of the number. How would you do that? Just basically, it's the reverse. It's exactly the reverse of what you're doing here. You start here, because it's a positive value of, X, of uh, 10, and you start counting six decimal spaces. 1, 2, and to do any more, I'm going to have to add zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I'm going to have to add some zeros. So 7, 7, 4, 0, 0, 0. Let's see if that's right. Starting from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nope, I need one more. 6. So again, check your work. Start with here. 7.74. Decimals here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the correct answer. 7, 7, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0. <coughs> okay? Do a little bit more. Let's say we have 8.241 times 10 to the 10. And I want to write that number down in all its glory. Okay, So I would say, well, again, I'm going to start with my decimal here, and I'm going to have to move this decimal 10 spaces to the right. So 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to have to start adding zeros to do any more. 8, 2, 4, 1. Let's just put some zeros and start counting and see where we end up. Let's start here. Let's count 10 decimals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 moving it over here. So starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the correct answer. Okay? So you see, for problems like this, if you were writing a paper or publishing some result or whatever, you were going to write this number down in your paper 25 times. That would be very difficult. But this is a very common accepted standard that everyone's going to understand. Now let's say you have 1.0. 0.037 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay? It's a negative exponent, so we know we're going to be moving the decimal point to the left, and we're going to be moving it to the left three spaces. So we just write 0 0.001037. This is supposed to be a 7 here. Okay? And let's check our work. We start with the decimal point between the 1 and the 0, just like this, and we move it three spaces. 1, 2, Three. And that would be the answer. So again, if you're writing a paper, carrying all these decimal points is going to be very difficult. And what if it was even smaller? If you had, you know, 19 decimal spaces here, it's going to be very difficult to write that stuff. But writing it in scientific notation is very, very quick and easy way to do that, okay? So let's recap real quick and just talk about what we're doing here. Scientific notation is basically a way to write very big numbers and very small numbers without writing all the zeros everywhere. 
multiply them by powers of 10, if you multiply them by positive powers of 10, you're going to make your number bigger by moving the decimal point that many places to the right. And if you're uh, multiplying by a negative power of 10, like over here, you're going to take this and move your decimal point to the left, however many spaces here. It's very consistent. You move it to the right, however many spaces, or the left, however many spaces, and that's really all, all you need to do. And just write, you know, you may not be able to visualize it right away, but just write some zeros down and check your work. You know, move your decimal with your finger, erase a zero if you have to, and go from there. So that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. That's scientific notation. That's, that's all there is to it. It's basically just taking a big number, sticking a decimal point after the first digit, and then counting your decimal spaces and writing it as a power of 10. So <clears throat> everything works out nicely because the power, powers of 10, every time you add a power of 10, you move that decimal place one point to the right or one spot to the left if it's a negative power of 10. And in all of these cases, in order for it to be scientific notation, you have to have one, one digit with a decimal and then whatever else follows. All of these, no matter if it's a negative or a positive power of 10, they all have positive digits one digit in front of the decimal point, that is what scientific notation is. It's one digit in front of the decimal, followed by whatever other digits give meaning to the number, times 10, and then you have plus or minus a number to move the decimal spot. And that's really it. So this is the first topic in this, in this DVD. It's a very important thing. You'll see it over and over again. And as we work some more problems, you'll see it again as well. So use that. Keep it in your back pocket. And don't forget it because you'll see it in all of your physics and your chemistry and your physical science and your even in geology. I mean, anything that, that deals with big numbers or small numbers, which is almost any branch of science at all, you're going to use scientific notation.